On 3rd June 2019, Cuphead history was made. It feels so cheap, but it's a strategy. After weeks of training, practicing and keep pushing forward, I managed to beat the game from beginning to the end blindfolded. But how is this possible? What weird and insane strategies I come up with to succeed? This is Cuphead Blindfold Playthrough Project Breakdown. Yep, that should do it. Nice beginning, good montage, mentioning that I am the best Cuphead player ever existed. Um, Luigi, I think you missed something. Oh yeah? What's that? Someone else managed to beat Cuphead blindfolded before you around half a year ago. Are you f- On 17th of November 2018, Cuphead history was made. Mm. Kate, just beat Cuphead. Red Sonia during her 2000 Twitch follower special managed to beat each individual boss from beginning to the end blindfolded in one go. But how is this possible? How much practice it required and what strategies she used to her advantage? This is Cuphead Blindfold Playthrough Project Breakdown. Okay, I'm not the first person anymore and with that all fame is gone. But the true journalist does whatever it takes to show the true side of each topic we speak about. Why are you lying? Oh hi, hey, uh, what's up man? If you want to speak the truth, why won't you just tell them this run is faked? I mean, I don't know what you're talking about. We as community checked this run closely and found out bunch of evidences this run wasn't legit. And you know that. You even did blindfold attempt yourself to truly found out if it's possible so what's the deal? I guess you're right. Okay, let's try again. On 3rd June 2019, Cuphead history was Cuphead history was made. Mm. Kate. It's so cheap, but you Cuphead blindfold. After weeks of beginning boss to the end, was the run truly faked? I'm gonna try my best to answer this question by comparing both of our runs. This is Cuphead blindfold playthrough review. Before starting, I should mention that the game we will talk about today is Cuphead. Released in 2017 run and gun game which combines platforming and boss rush elements. Three difficulties, multiple weapons, super attacks and passive charms. I also want to mention that me and Red Sonia take a bit different routing and rules for this challenge. While Red Sonia get required weapons, lobber and round about and started the run with them, I decided to give myself different set of rules. In short, I can use everything that game allows like weapons and charms as long as I can manage to get them blindfolded. As a small spoiler, it means I'm gonna use more items in late game than Red Sonia, giving myself an advantage over her methods. When it comes to map movement, we both decided to try and move around and use menu while being blindfolded, so I won't compare those in this video. With that said, I started the run by beating tutorial stage for one coin, get three coins from NPC on the bridge, Got him. and bought my first weapon roundabout for four coins which helped me in upcoming run and gun stage where I need to get more money for my second weapon. Shortly said this was one of the hardest stages in this challenge, which required lots of planning and practicing before succeeding, but I won't go too deeply into this in this video. In short, I managed to beat it after 3 hours. Bravo! Got it! Got it, got it, got it! Now with both weapons, we finally can start comparison. Starting with the first and arguably the easiest boss, Root Pack, both me and Retsonia managed to beat it first try. There's really not too much to say, as this boss doesn't have too much attacks and you can beat it in no time. The only suspicious part from Retsonia is how she positioned herself perfectly after Carrot Face appeared, but I'm gonna talk more about positioning later on. The next boss however wasn't that easy, and it took a couple of off attempts for me. First and second phase have an easy attack patterns that gives enough sound clues to make it durable. The difficulty of this boss come up with the last phase. After activating machine slot, you can get three different attacks, tiger chips, bully chips or snake chips. From which tigers are extremely hard to dodge blindfolded, bully chips are 50-50 coin flip if you're gonna guess right the position of laser, and snake is the easiest one, as you have huge chance to land on them while jumping. After a while I got snakes with quite lucky jumps, as I didn't practice timing for it. Red Sonya ended up with similar RNG, managing to beat this boss in first try once again. Her boss is Guppy Legrande, which has similar difficulty curve as Root Pack. Two first phases are very similar, Guppy jumps around but you can kind of predict where he will be and duck his attacks with ease while keep attacking him. And last gravestone phase is a joke. You just move when he decides to attack. We both managed to first try him. 
Now we're moving to the hardest boss in First Island, Hildaberg. And difficulty skyrocks here. Like, literally. As we are moving to plain levels, which changed casual playthrough a bit. But for blindfold runs, it changed the way you play completely. You see, the biggest problem of not seeing the game is knowing what is your position at the screen. You can kind of predict where giant bosses will be on screen, but if you're gonna lose control of your position, you are screwed. And doing it on plane levels are much harder, as you need to take care not only of your horizontal position, but vertical as well. For me, it was insanely difficult to maintain my position. Three. One, two, three, die! Die! I was off the position, right? And I wasn't connecting the bullets. That's the only one expansion how she survived. Combine it with insanely long bullet hell fight and you are screwed. I quickly realized rushing this boss is no way to go, so I needed to plan a strategy for each part of the fight and take it slowly and steady. To start with, I needed to lower music to hear the sound clues more clearly. Second, we need to analyze how the whole fight looks and what I need to be careful at time. First, let's look at the faces of the boss. Well, there's basically 7 phases we need to take care of. Some of which are pretty similar, but offers a bit of a different challenge. During whole fight, Hilda summons purple and green minions which are shooting right at us. So how I'm gonna take care of them? Simple really. As purple green minions shoots right onto us in the straight line, so after healing a shot, I need to go away from the shoot line for a couple of seconds and it's fine. Green ones, however, shot spread bullets, but they are spread enough that staying in the place is good enough to dodge them. There's no sound clues which minions spawn, but green ones only appear in third phase, so we can ignore that for now. Second danger is Hilda herself and her laugh attack. After healing her, all I need to do is move to the corner of the screen. With those strats we can move to first Hilda transform, the ball. For this one, I don't have enough time to hear and dodge her charge attack in time, so I just need to shoot her for a while and move out of her attack range area. Wait for her attack and go back into offense. Her face is quite tricky, as Hilda gains her new attack, Trollnado, which comes right into us. But it is actually quite easy to dodge, just move down forward while you hit Trollnado and move back after a while. Bigger problem is when minions and Trollnado combine, then I just focus on Trollnado and pray minions gonna miss me. Also green minions come up in this phase, but to my surprise, green and purple minions appear in certain order, so I just learned the pattern and prepared myself. Fourth phase is her second transformation, which is random, Sagittarius or Twins, and this is the first big problem of this boss. Sagittarius shoots his arrows and homing stars which are hard to predict and dodge, so I quickly gave up on this. Second one, Twins, spawns bullet hell on middle of screen, which can start by going left or right. I cannot tell which pattern I will get, so I decided to go for crazy double coin flip strat. By getting 50-50 Twins and getting 50-50 bullet hell into left side, I can use Nuke to grind invincibility and go back to safe position without taking damage and bursting this phase, getting only one attack out of it. In short, I have 25% chance to get RNG I need and then I need to execute quite a safe strat and move on. Fifth phase is combination of everything we saw before, so we just need to repeat the same strats. And now we can move to the last phase where Hilda transforms into Half Moon and starts to summon UFOs which are attacking with lasers and random stars. This is the most dangerous and random part of the fight. So how I managed to beat it? Well first of all I got extremely lucky on successful attempts, no doubting that. But I also prepared myself as much as I can. Starting with the stars, they spawn rate and pattern are random, but I found out that lighting doesn't strike the same place twice. At least for some time. After getting hit by the star, I know I have a couple of safe seconds in that spot, as next star will appear after some time, giving me a bit more safe ground, but that's all I can do about the stars. About UFOs, after hearing her laugh, I started to counting to 8, and after first UFO, up to 3. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, if I wouldn't hear the laser after countdown, it means Fred UFO appeared, which shoots laser when I'm getting under it, so I need to dash really quickly. If after counting I hit laser, it means it's yellow UFO, which shoots when I'm close to it, so I need to wait and dash after some time. Again, with bunch of luck and not the best execution, I made it. I beat first plane level boss. It was an insane, long and exhausting fight, which took me around 2 hours to beat. And honestly, she almost made me quit this challenge. Yes! We got it! We got it, guys! Oh my god! The first plane boss is so hard, what insanity awaits me later on. But with that said, 
How did Red Sonia manage to beat this boss anyway? Plays the game without a controller. <laughs> Play with my brain. Yeah. That's right. She started by taking two quick hits on beginning of the fight to charge up her godlike speedrunning experience and fly it around like a madman, connecting most of bullets on Hilda by following her most of the time. Perfectly dodging all aerial minions and projectiles, all transformations which include homing stars from Sagittarius, all UFOs and stars at the last phase. Remember what I said on route back? The only suspicious part from Epsonia is how she positioned herself perfectly after Carlos first appeared. But I'm gonna talk more about positioning later on. Well, it looks like Epsonia mastered the controls and know exactly where she is through the whole fight. Staying perfectly in the middle of the screen for most time, not bumping into enemies and doing insanely clutch dodges on random attacks. And she beat her in her third attempt. This is insane. I should should have mentioned earlier, some bullets can be pink, which can be parried to neutralize them and charge up EX meter for more powerful attacks. But while being blindfolded, you cannot tell which projections might be pink. And I love how she randomly gets close to pink bullet, attempt to parry it, and continue parry randomly to fake us out that wasn't on purpose. To be honest, she got hit by parry of a bullet earlier, but it doesn't change that she didn't even try to randomly parry anything else during fight except this once. When it comes to land level positioning, there's not too much options where you can be as a player. On plane levels, however, it's close to impossible, and the way Red Sonia moves during the whole fight looks unnatural. When we checked this fight for the first time, it shocked us, and honestly, just for sake of attempt, I was trying to play like Red Sonia, using my speedrunning experience and muscle memory to just react to what I can hear, but it didn't end up well. If such a suspicious fight happened so early, what else Red Sonia will show us in her attempt? Well, let's chill out a bit and move on to the last boss of his island, Cagni Incarnation. He has multiple attacks, with the most dangerous one is Seed Attack, which not only can hit us, but also spawns small minions which are coming right onto us. Luckily, with nice pattern and quick fight, you can skip them. Other attacks is Face Charge, which is again a con flip, if you're gonna dodge him or not, a Corn Swarm and Boomerang Throw, which can be dodged with ease. The last phase is quite interesting one. You see, you cannot stay on ground to not get hit by appearing vines. Other than that, that's just dodging slow single bullets. Most will also attempt to hit us on platforms with the vines, but luckily you can jump, use special ability to gain more air momentum, and dodge this way instead of jumping from platform to platform. But how did I know when Kagni is gonna attack the platform I'm staying at? Well, I didn't. Until during a successful attempt, I realized you can actually hit the difference between those attacks. You see, two first platforms are on the left side of screen, so if Kagni attacks those, you will hear vines on your left headphone. If he attacks the closest one to him, where we are standing, you will hear it in your right headphone. It helped me to dodge those attacks and beat him quite quickly. That headphones really helps because when there was the bob on the left, right? For the left for you. Then I hear that in my left uh, uh, headphone. But when he was on the right, which was this one which hits me, I hear it in the right one. So essentially sound quotes told me when to dodge. Lol. Easy. Good job, Luigi. Great explanation as always. Red Sonia didn't got seed pattern as well in her successful attempt and managed to beat him as well in no time. The only suspicious part was on her failed attempt. One of spawned minions, which we like to call Flying Pumpkin, shoots randomly pink bullets right at player, and you cannot hear it. She perfectly moves out of the first bullet randomly, and second one she tried to dug out right when bullet was close to her, but she got hit anyways. Honestly, without seeing the screen, there's no reason to duck at all at the moment. But maybe I'm just super sensitive right now. Well, that took us some time, but we make it and we finally can go to Second Island. First boss we're gonna take care of, Baronet for Bonbon, is arguably the easiest one of them. To start with, first part of the fight is separated into three mini bosses, randomly choose from Cupcake, Wafu, Jawbreaker, Gumball Machine and Candycorn. Each of them are quite easy to beat thanks to weapon swap leads combined with their low HP value, so usually you will kill them before they hit you. Last phase is a castle chase where you need to run away from it while keep damaging boss, but her transform takes a lot of time during which you can keep damaging her, so all you do is skip most of the chase by killing her as soon as possible. Unfortunately, for Red Sonia, her chase took much longer and gave a bunch of problems, but what stands out is final blow and her reaction to victory. On previous successful knockouts and future ones, she usually takes it quite easy, but this time she overreacted. She wasn't able to see exactly what was happening, so why did she react this time like this? The peppermint's out! Oh my god, I did it! Okay! 
Jesus Christ! Probably because you are literally pixels short of dying before knockout. Like, come on, you wouldn't see that coming, right? Before we're gonna move to next boss, Baby the Clown, I would like to say we did a bit different routing, but we're gonna focus on my boss route, mostly because she managed to beat them all, one by one, and I didn't make it out so clearly, but we're gonna talk about it more later. So about Beppy, in my opinion he's not the hardest boss in the world, but has a bunch of RNG elements into it. It's separated into four phases, first one is simple dashes from side to side with ducks flying above you, thanks to shooting upwards and proper jumps I managed to make it without losing HP. Next phase is Ballon Phase, where randomly generated Ballon Dogs bounce, it's unpredictable and hard to survive but I use some tricks to my advantage. You see, by shooting to the left wall, I was shooting hidden hitbox, you can see I make a no contact with the boss thanks to charging my special meter, it can cause Beppy glitch used in speedruns which frees Beppy in Ballon Phase, but that's the opposite of what I want, so by damaging this hitbox a bit later, I then get the glitch and skip second phase completely. Her face is Beppy on Donkey, which can appear on left or right side of screen, it's once again a coin flip, so I decided to always stay on the left side and hope I will hit him. This way I can kill him before Trains runs into me, which starts to spawn after first phase and sticks until the end of the fight. Last phase is quite a tricky one, as you need to position yourself on middle and dodge the upcoming train. To do that you need to land on cycling platforms and stay on them. To be honest, I just used legendary speedrunning experience combined with luck to not fall from platforms and got a knockout. When it comes to Red Sonia, to my surprise it was the fight which took her the longest time to beat. It's not the easiest bosses out there, but he wasn't hard, so what did go wrong? As I said earlier... So about Beppy, in my opinion he's not the hardest boss in the world, but has a bunch of RNG elements into it. Turns out you cannot hide you faking the run when the whole fight is RNG mess. It took her almost 20 minutes to beat, which is an amazing score, right? Yes, it is. But compared to the other fights, that was the longest one, which only shows how amazing her run was. After a bunch of unexpected deaths, she finally got the run, so how did she do that? Well, first phase is easy task, then she got balloon phase, and as I said, this is RNG Fiesta, so why did she run away from those dogs? Like, how she did know? Then she runs into Donkey, bursting him out and finishing boss while jumping on platform. Like successful attempt doesn't look that suspicious. But she did a bunch of suspicious stuff doing failed attempts. Although I'm gonna bring only one. She did parry again while jumping on moving train, in mid-air randomly. She doesn't parry during every jump, she always parries perfectly when she gets close to parable object. This is getting insane. Okay, I got the... Got the second phase. That means this is coming next. Excuse me, what? Did you really claim you managed to beat this challenge thanks to speedrunning experience, doing insanely movements while being blindfolded, but it took you 9 seconds to hit this god out crying baby that shouts to you, okay, I'm dead, I'm just gonna go and transfer into fucking Caruser to recognize the donkey face ended up? At this point, you're just trying to act like you played blindfolded and it's back, Frank, back at you really hard. Before moving forward, I should mention that I managed to grab a couple of hidden coins in Overworld and bought myself a bonus heart charm, which increased HP up to 4 and reduced damage by 5%, and I will use it for the rest of the challenge. Also me and Sonia pick up a free plane upgrade from NPC, which adds up a second weapon, mini bomb, for the plane levels. This way we can execute weapon swap glitch in plane levels to increase our damage output. Speaking of which, it's plane level time. That's right, the hardest type of level is back, with another crazy bullet hell boss. To start with, Jimmy the Great has 5 phases, normal one, flappy bird column based one, a sarcophagus, Pinocchio and giant transform. But of course I won't be able to beat this boss by just rushing him, so we need to come up with a strategy. To do that, we're gonna start from the end. You see, we're actually gonna skip Pinocchio and giant phase by executing quite difficult glitch. If you manage to deal enough damage to hit the Pinocchio phase flag before beating sarcophagus phase, it will freeze and never transform further on. But why I would like to freeze him here? Combining random mummies with random speed and semi-random satellite attack? Well, I found out the safe spot. By positioning yourself right here, you will never get hit by satellite, never get hit by mummy, and even if they spawn on your line, your mini bomb will always kill them as your shoot rate is faster. And lastly, you will hit the boss from this position. So all I need to do is beat first two phases while doing enough damage to get the glitch. Position myself and get free kill. Sounds like an easy plan, right? Well, it is not. Let's talk about the column phase. 
First of all, we need to get the glitch. To do that we need to shot another off-screen hitbox. To reach it, we need to get into left down corner and shoot mini bombs. Again, you can see I'm hitting boss thanks to card meter, but how I'm gonna dodge those columns? That's the catch. I won't. We need to destroy a face column to make a hole which you can go through safely. But position of heads are random. To make it worse between columns we have randomly moving selves. Should we say it, it is impossible to beat column face blindfolded. What I will do however is use my 4 HP to keep doing damage, barely surviving column face by tanking the damage and moving forward to get glitch and potentially finish the fight. This strategy is much harder than it sounds, as I need to listen when I got hit, move perfectly to get through two columns forward, but don't bump anything and pray I won't get hit by random sounds. But it's not over. Finally, we can move to first phase. As we already know, I cannot get hit once to make rest of the fight possible, and it is close to impossible. We can get three possible outcomes at the beginning, treasure gems, which is random bullet heads so I cannot expect to not get hit here, sword swarm, which can spawn in different places and different patterns, which is like 99% of the time I will get hit, so my bet goes to last attack, the cards, which throw small sarcophagus right to where I am and later release homing projectiles. As so Jimmy attacks as well with his... soul? The only advantage of this attack is that it is predictable. So after a lot of researching, I come up with crazy and close to perfect movement, which allows me to dodge sarcophagus, move back down to dodge a soul, and after a while move up and left to dodge small bullets. As with those strats, I cannot miss too many shots, otherwise I won't be able to reach the boss later on. After long hours of researching, learning and executing those strats, I beat the boss. And honestly, I think this was the weirdest, craziest strat I come up with during this challenge. Yes! <laughs> Got him! But we need to ask ourselves a question. How did Red Sonia manage to beat this boss anyway? Speaking of which, I should probably find my tissue soon. We need to destroy a face column to make a hole which you can go through safely. But position of heads are random. To make it worse between columns we have randomly moving selves. Should we say it, it is impossible to beat column face blindfolded. Oh good. Fuck you Jimmy. This is it. Ladies and gentlemen, what you just witnessed is speedrunning experience in purest form. Even with perfect reaction, you don't have enough time to process where did you destroy the head and get right through any time. At least she got quite lucky with Sauce, but this is not how blindfolded person would react at play. It's hard to explain why, but trust me, I tried my best to get through this phase, I practiced potential movement and reaction, and it just doesn't work. Her movement during whole fight is suspicious with the whole phase. It's too much man, and it took her two attempts as well. Just look how she perfectly dodges randomly generated swords. Sounds like swords. Maybe jewels. Are you for real? Just like in bed, you acting laughable. You just perfectly dodged swords, or should I say reacted to them, and then you needed to say that it might have been jewels. Jewels generates different sound comparing to swords, and with that movement you would have been hit multiple times with jewels bullet spam. If you're claiming that you managed to beat this challenge thanks to speedrunning experience, why are you saying that it might have been different attack after perfectly dodging those swords by knowing it was swords? If your speedrunning experience helps you get through random, tight and brutal column flames without a scratch, but suddenly you have a problem recognizing which set of attack you just fucking survived, just like in Beppy, you acting horrible and you're still claiming that you didn't fake this run. But more about that later. Time to move to next plane level boss, Wally Warbus. Which is in my opinion the hardest boss when it comes to blindfold playthrough. If the real list for Cuphead blindfolded bosses would exist, Wally Warbus would make it to the top. I won't explain that now, but shortly said I didn't manage to beat him at the moment. And after hours of trying I was ready to give up, but because it was going so well, we made deal with Twitch chat. I'm gonna beat this boss unblindfolded and move on. And in case of beating rest of the game, we're gonna try to beat him again in future, with all items I had at the moment. So the last boss of this island is Grim Mastic, and to make it even more interesting, we skipped him as well. He might have been beatable at the moment, but I wanted to beat him with Super 2 ability, which gives you invisibility for a couple of seconds. But for that I will need to get more coins in next island, 
Luckily I can beat him on simple difficulty which will let me go to next island, but won't let me go to final part of the game, King Dice Palace. Should we say it? I'm skipping Dragon intended way and will come back to him later. Now we finally can move to third island, which has the biggest amount of bosses, which is 7. But we're gonna start with Rumor Homie Bottom. And man, this boss is another nightmare to deal with. She's not the longest fight and her attacks are quite predictable, but there's one element which makes it one of the hardest bosses to beat, platforms. You see, only first set of platforms are completed, after a while they can randomly not spawn. This one change makes the fight completely unpredictable and different every time. And that's the problem. Only first phase is similar in every attempt, so I can take down policemen with ease, but later it becomes random mess. I don't know where I am or which platform I might be, and am I hitting the boss anyways? The only thing I could have done is brute force, keep trying and trying until I'm gonna beat the boss. It took me a couple of hours of retrying and even I got surprised when I finally got it. What? Really does it? So now we know, this boss is biggest RNG fiesta and you don't will never know where you are right full dead. So how Red Sona dealt with that limitation? <coughs> A poem, if you will. After beating all bosses with ease, it is time to take down some bees, enjoying landscape and amazing sea. With my blindfold, which true I cannot see, only bottom runs away and cannot be beaten. Until I'm gonna take down this policeman. And there she comes with all her glory. Hopefully I'm playing right category. Jumping from platform to platform, even though it was essentially random. And please my viewers, don't freak out as she fucking first tried it. Fuck yeah. First fucking try, you bitch. Yes. Do I need to explain that she perfectly moved from platform to platform, always keeping the same position as Connie Bottom to connect most of the bullets and using Duck to jump off the platform to dodge bullets while being blindfolded? It took me multiple hours to even stand a chance against this bullshitness and she casually first tried this with perfect movement. <sighs> this is impossible. So it is time to move on. And yet again, it's plane level time. Dr. Carr's robot is not a joke, and his legendary bullet hell in last phase is impossible to beat blindfolded. But we're not gonna play it. You see, me and Red Sonia decided to play Legacy version to give us weapon swap which advantage which makes each bot much easier. But there's a second reason. Legacy version has exclusive glitch which can finish this fight in first phase, which makes it the easiest plane boss out there. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. But it doesn't mean it's gonna be easy task. So how does the glitch work? Up to this day it's not perfectly known, but in short, first phase is robot itself. You need to destroy three parts of his body, which is gonna show his heart, and after beating it you move to the next phase. But this boss was programmed in weird way, as each of those parts has separate HP from main boss. Last shot into heart actually does damage to boss, which is exactly 141 HP every time. Fun fact, this is the reason why progress meter doesn't move an inch until you're gonna beat first phase. We can abuse this system and use bomb special EX attack, which spawns 9 homing magnet missiles. They don't do too much damage, but if shot correctly, each of those will hit hard in the same frame and each of those bullets will do multiplied damage, killing boss in one shot and finishing the fight. So how I'm gonna set up this glitch blindfolded? Simple really. This glitch is commonly used in legacy speedruns as it saves bunch of time. Um, this is my second day. So I know this glitch already. All I needed to do is derust my muscle memory, adjust some movement to blindfold attempt, and after some time and bit of luck, I managed to get the kill. Fight is short enough that you can tank most of the bullets, you just need to be careful of knockdown, which push you back. Every time I got hit, I need to move forward a bit to adjust my position. So, speedrunning experience finally come out to my advantage. Does that mean Red Sonia also is gonna confirm her speedrunning experience proof by doing the same? Numbers with Cuphead. Holy shit! I got the glitch. 
Did you expect it something else? Of course she didn't use her muscle memory, of course she didn't plan ahead. Her strategy is simple. Dodge every fucking thing in this bullet hell, destroy each part, damage heart low enough for it to crack so she can hear the sound clue it creates, move perfectly close to it and get the glitch. Of course that's what blindfolded person will do. I guess I'm just too stupid to come up with those conclusions. Also, why did you scream here? Yes, you did insane close to perfection dodge with perfect movement. But how did you know what are you dodging like you were able to see through blindfold? Does your emotions take over the attempt of faking the run? Shit, I didn't count right. No! And why you started to spam special attack after missing the glitch? Because you tried to fake us out again? Explain me this. How you are able to hear cracking heart every time while tons of other sound happens, but you don't hear cracking robot signalizing you going to second phase, and you are flying like a dumb dumb while using EX. If you will try to fake it out, you should have stayed in place to show us you were trying to hit the heart for robot's sake. And what the fuck was that? You again just flying around, dodging most of stuff like God and easily parry parable object in one go without realistically knowing where were you and where pink object will be. For such a short fight, you really managed to show how trustworthy this run is. Well, this video is already half hour long, so we might try to follow speedrunning road and try to take three bosses in one go: Sunny States Play, Werner Wehrmann, and Captain Branebeard. Shortly said, each of those bosses are really easy comparing to what we witnessed already, and speedrunning experience works really well here. Sally's movement is predictable and similar every time, and its face is really short if done correctly, so we can use speedrunning route to kill her insanely fast. Werner is not that easy, and requires some luck, but he's durable as well. Captain Brandy beat is easy if you're gonna get right RNG, which you have 50% chance of it, so you can beat him quickly as well. While I managed to first try the Werner, Wetzel managed to beat Sally and Werner in one go. There might be some insane movement in her attempt, but to be honest, we already saw enough and trust me, there's more to come. So why we won't leave those and move to more interesting fights? Plane level time! And this is an insanely tricky one. You see, Gala Maria is second hardest boss in this challenge. Shorty explained she has multiple bullet hair attacks which can have multiple patterns and she can combine them into one unsurvivable attack. Let's just analyze them one by one, shall we? Well, first we need to separate them in two categories. Summons, which are minions that Calamaria can... Well... Summon? Second one is personal attack, which is her way to protect herself. Important thing is she can, and she almost always will combine one summon and one personal attack into one. She cannot summon twice or attack personally twice in a row. Let's start with summons. We have a Tertu, potentially most dangerous one. It throws three spike balls into the air, which explodes into multiple spikes. This attack is insanely difficult to dodge blindfolded and usually you're gonna survive it by pure luck. Second one is Seahorse, which spit out water on us. It doesn't damage us, but pushes screwing up our movement and making other attacks much harder to survive. Third one are Pufferfish. Tons of pufferfishes come up in random order and random pattern. Forgot the turtle. This is unsurvivable attack. Those fishes die is really easy, but there's too many of them and combined with other attacks, you will get hit multiple times. Some fishes can be pink and parried, but good luck hitting random parries. When it comes to personal attack, she can start to summon three homing goes three times. Alone this attack is easy to predict, but combined with other, they can catch you off guard. Second is redfish, which creates small bullet hell which usually will get you, and the last one, Yellowfish, summons Electric Eel. Wait a second. That's a fucking dolphin? Well anyways, he follows you up for some time and tries to hit you. Again, alone he's quite easy to dodge, but combined with others, he can easily get you. Well then, we know first face is insanely RNG mess with multiple unsurvivable patterns. But what about the rest of the fight? Well, second phase, she tries to stun you, but by staying close to her, you will not get hit by this attack. And most of the time, she can burst this phase out until bullet hell will start. But how I manage to stay close to her blindfolded? Well, I need to stay close to her most of the time, so I realize shooting mini bombs can help me with positioning. 
You see, the inner bomb explodes the closer I am to her, so I'm trying to position myself close enough that mini bomb is gonna explode instantly. Last phase is another difficult part. First of all, she changes her position, so I need to do the same. Then we move to auto scroll part with spike columns along the way. I cannot predict or dodge those, so I need to shoot and pray I'm gonna finish the fight before she's gonna finish me. I'm sorry to say, but there's really not too much I can do from my part. I'm planned my positioning, movement, and plan ahead as much as I can, but difficulty comes up with RNG patterns you cannot survive. So it was a big, long grind. Starting with first phase, I got Seahorse and Electric Dolphin. I didn't do too much damage, but I didn't get hit. Then I got Turtle and Ghost Pattern, which is undodgeable, so I tanked her twice and hoped I would charge up my special meter to full and use Nuke. I got insanely lucky as I got full set of cards couple of frames earlier before using Nuke, which is actually really important later on. You see, usually you barely deal enough damage during this fight to get two nukes in one fight, and to get them I need to use them almost instantly after charging my meter to full. By using nuke that early, it will allow me to potentially use second nuke later on, which could save my life. As I said, second phase is positioning yourself and bursting her out. Her face is a mess, and I did huge mistake. I didn't position myself correctly, I didn't do enough damage, but as I said, I managed to get the nuke, second time in a row, using it almost instantly after getting it without realizing. Yes! Oh my god, I got the nuke! Yes! If Red Sonia would do the same, I would say she probably cheated it out. So I must be honest, that was the luckiest moment in this whole run. But hey, in my defense, it took me an hour to finish this fight, with a lot of unsuccessful attempts in the way. So how did Red Sonia manage to beat this boss anyway? Fuck you, Carla Maria! Yeah, suck on that bitch. Bitch, bitch, bitch. Bitch, bitch. So, I don't even know what I can say. With which argument I should start with. Like, come on guys, you are not blindfolded, and you can see how ridiculous this is at this point. Perfect dodging, perfect reacting to each combination of attack and random patterns, perfect positioning to keep attacking Kamaria, perfect dodging unrecognizable, unhearable spike columns. Just look how she just confidently parried once while running away from ghosts, and then parried up to 4 times in the air after attack to fake it out. Just look how she perfectly dodges pufferfish and upcoming ghosts, and perfectly stop dodging right after the last puffer fish left the screen. Just look how she perfectly managed to dodge those attacks while being small plane, when smalling yourself changed your momentum completely. Just look how she always reacted perfectly to this pattern of puffer fish, but when she got other, easier one, she instantly didn't fly it around as she knows she has a safe spot close to Karamaria with this RNG and started to move just when redfish appeared. Just look how she perfectly parried puffer fish while running away and dodges everything else, and then fucking perfectly parry second time, in a row. 3 seconds, 2 parries. After perfectly surviving this bullet hell, you did this. You ran into last pufferfish in the corner of screen. Because you realize what insanity you just did while being blindfolded. And in attempt of hiding it, you just ran into last enemy to prove you innocent. Yeah, I'm convinced. I mean, guys, come on, she got hit. That means she didn't fake it out, right? I was really... Really thinking I was getting lucky there. You really feel lucky? Well, let me tell you, your luck just ran out. And I'm not buying it. Let's... Let's just move on and continue, shall we? As there's still a long way ahead of us. It is time for last boss of the Riant, Phantom Express. You see, this is quite interesting fight. We already got plane levers where keeping your position is hard. Stages with platforms where it's hard to know where you might be at the moment, but what do we have here? A trolley, which is our only platform in this fight, but to make it more interesting, we can control it by powering it, but what is even more interesting, boss can do it as well. So it's gonna be important to keep an eye where it's platform. Luckily it can only be in three positions, left, middle and right. During each phase, except last one, flying pumpkins will appear with pink, soap, and drop it in attempt of hitting us or switching the platform. What is important, they can start appearing from left or right side. To make it much easier, I'm trying to get first pumpkin from the right. 
It's about first phase. It's self-explanatory. A move bit forward to get close to power wheel, short forward, destroy boss and hit projectiles with this. And while moving to next phase, I parry my platform to get to the middle and parry me there. Because I kill this phase in similar time every time, I consistently can get this parry right here to get more cards. Also while parrying, I'm high enough in air to shoot round about, which comes back and shoot new spam pumpkin on the left, making second phase free. All I need to do is position myself and shoot up to kill skeleton phase. Problem is third pumpkin appearing from right side. He moves my platform before I kill skeleton, so I'm tanking one damage, finish the phase and dash to the right. Unfortunately, I failed in successful attempt and take 2 damage instead. In third phase, I can stay in right and parry right wheel to stay in place, as other pink objects cannot interact one after another. I quickly bested first wind before he even attacked, and it's time for pause. You might wonder what is the reason of pausing in this certain moment. Is this about energy manipulation? Or maybe I'm activating some kind of cheat in the background? Well, not really. I'm just dumb and didn't know how I'm gonna recognize which weapon I'm using blindfolded. How am I gonna know if I'm shooting from the bottom lobber? I don't have any quotes now. <laughs> Honestly, I think I just need to shoot the uh, weapon swap ahead, whatever. That's right. We only need to shoot round about to the right to hit the boss and ghost with spawn pink skulls. After hitting the ghost, I know I need to parry the wheel to make sure I won't move, so it's just about waiting until I'm gonna kill the second queen. And what about the last phase? First of all, I need to move to the middle and position myself to the left side of it. Let's just say I learned the movement for it before the fight, because what I want to do is execute speedrunning strategy. In speedruns, by positioning yourself in this certain place, you can parry pink bulb and shoot an engine for one psycho kill. Maybe it wasn't clean, but with muscle memory and derusting the strategy, it actually worked out. To be honest, I expected this fight to be one of the hardest ones, but it just happened that with right planning and strategies, it is more than durable. I guess I need to mention how Red Sonia did, huh? After all, this is what this video is about. Well, that depends what you want to hear. Yeah, she did beat this fight, but there's no strategy involved really. Just acting and reacting to everything that happens. Just look how she's dealing with second twin, perfectly controlling platform and perfectly dodging ghosts while not falling down. There's no obvious evidence like, oh, she did something obvious here. But if you watch this video closely, you might see how her movement is not natural, but let's just move on. We finally make it to last location, Inkwell Hell. But as I told you, we still need to beat the dragon before we can beat King Dice and Devil. So we collected two hidden coins in Overworld and managed to beat four pirates in a row quest, which was harder than I expected. That was four! That was four! We got the quest! Woo! Let's go! Got it! Ha! Geo strats! <laughs> Hi Geo! With those three coins, I wanted to buy Sugar Parry. But because I didn't sell items, I did huge mistake and bought different charm, smoke bomb. What does that mean? Is that I screwed myself? And come to conclusion I just failed my bonus quest of doing map movement and menuing blindfolded. To fix it, I beat it one run and gun rebel unblindfolded to grab another free coins and decided to buy Paris Sugar and pretend like I don't have smoke bomb for this challenge. Now we can go to Mausoleum 2, and thanks to Paris Sugar we can easily destroy all ghosts by staying in one place and get Super 2, Invincibility Ability, which will come up handy for Dragon, King Dice and Devil, so let's go and beat the Dragon. You see, that's why I needed that Paris Sugar, without it, it wouldn't be possible. And I cannot believe I'm saying this, but I managed to get Super 2 blindfolded. Wow. It might change a lot. Well, you probably can see from beginning what will be the biggest problem of this boss, platforms. But I might surprise you, as they are not as bad as they were on Honey Bottom. Biggest difference is that you can hit boss most of the time, no matter of your position, making this fight much shorter. Starting from beginning, first set of clouds is the same, so I can do the same movement to get close to him every time. Later on, there's no more strats except this one, jumping forward after some time. You see, by doing that most of the time, you're gonna land on one of the platforms and hey, you might just dot something in the way. The same we did on second phase, but because Dragon is on the left side of screen now, we do that to escape him. This might not be the safest strat, but honestly, I don't see other one, and I have 4 HP at start. Last phase is quite interesting. You are attacked by Fireboss and Flamethrower. Usually. You actually hide behind the Dragon, as he doesn't have hurtbox in there, and you won't get hit. So your biggest problem is speed under you, and that's why I needed Super 2. Just using it and safely kill him before he kills me. <laughs> oh, yes! Fuck you, Dragon! <laughs> Wolf, you are dumb! You cannot beat the Dragon, I can! <laughs> A 
and it comes to Red Sonia. She doesn't have bonus HP and super 2 as I did, so she's gonna experience full Dragon Rage. But don't worry, like most of the time, her strategy is to abuse speedrunning experience and just dodge most of the stuff coming right at her. Remember when I said first set of platforms is always the same and you can use it for your advantage? Well, Red Sonia didn't realize that and preferred to stay on the back, don't do damage to boss and wait for his first attack to dodge it with ease with new random set of platforms. It's genius! You cannot truly really judge if landing on platforms or dodging the attack was faked or lucky in this fight, but I have one question. Why did you use Duck to jump off the platform in the fight? Just a huge reminder, you fighting on mid air and beyond you is huge speed which will kill you. So why risking potential dodge like this? Did you know that you are on one of higher clouds, another one is right under you? But how? You cannot hit cloud platforms so what's the deal? Also how quickly you position yourself on the last phase is quite surprising. But I guess we won't get more out of this fight so let's go finish the game shall we? Fuck yeah! <sighs> King dies, oh man, where do I start? I guess we need to explain his actually boss rush type of challenge, but don't worry, we won't gonna refight previous bosses like Mega Man style. He actually prepared his own custom related set of mini bosses we need to beat in the way. You see, we need to get from the beginning to the end using D3 type of dice. Don't ask guys, this game already gave up realistic logic from beginnings, so you can move from one to up three places in a row, skipping some parts of the game. So what do we have there? Obviously number from 1 to 9, each one represents different boss, save which is safe place where you just throw dice again, queen which is the end of the game, and start over which throws you back on the beginning. Luckily it won't reset your progress and it can be activated only once per attempt, so it's not that bad if you know how to control dice. Another smile add up is that random hearts can appear between those three sets of bosses, giving you bonus heart. And yes, you can get more HP than usually with that. Now that we know what game we are playing, we really should quickly analyze each boss we can encounter. To make it simple, I'm gonna explain basic mechanics, difficulty of the boss and special rank, the possibility. Which will show us if it's possible or impossible to beat chosen boss blindfolded without getting hit. Number 1. Alcohol glasses. There's three of them and each one has simple attack. One attack us from above, other one attacks us from the floor, another one spawns flying minions which shoot at us from time to time. But there's enough sound clues which can make this fight possible so when it comes to difficulty they're doable. And they're more than possible to beat without getting hit. Number 2. Poker Chips. You know Yellow Devil from Mega Man? Yeah, it's his brother from another dimension. His only attack is separation into different parts and charging you one by one. And his weakness is head. In short, this fight is short but hard. And while being blindfolded, it's really impossible to beat him hitless. Number 3. Cigarette. He has a lot of HP. And throws firebars which cast the same trajectory every time. But they are still hard to dodge. Also he swaps his position from time to time, so you need to jump over a bit while small cigarette flies here to hit you. This fight is not the hardest one, but surely impossible to beat him hitless. Number 4. Domino Kapu. Well, so we say there's not too much to dodge, but floor have spikes. Even though they're always the same, good luck dodging it. And you need to hit them midair, which makes this fight much harder and really not possible to not get hit. Number 5. Magic Rabbit. He has two attacks, skulls which flies around you and leave one gap for you you cannot recognize blindfolded, and bullet spam starting from floor or roof coming right on you. You need to go for pink bullet and parry it to survive. It's not the hardest fight but you can guess it's impossible to beat it heedless. Number 6. Flying Skeleton. I'm just gonna say two words. Bullet hell and play level. It's four words? I don't care. Hard and impossible. Let's move on. Number 7. Ballerina. She is quite easy to beat as you can hit her every time, but she can charge you multiple times or spawn bullets from heaven, which leave you one small gap randomly to dust through. She's average to beat, but you will get hit, that's for sure. Number 8. 8 ball. You see what I did here? Man, this boss is a joke. He doesn't have too much HP and you can burst him with ease. If done correctly, all he will do is shoot one bullet and summon one minion which you might dodge with a bit of luck. He's really easy and possible to beat Hitless as well. Number 9. A fucking monkey. Let's explain how you beat him as a normal person. You need to play matching game and find parts to be able to damage his boss. 
It's long and exhausting fight. At least it's quite easy, but while being blindfolded, you won't be able to predict the movement of random monkey. Luckily that's the glitch. If you're gonna stop monkey with cards close to edge of the screen, he has a chance to scroll himself out of screen and give you knockout. But again, you don't know where the monkey is blindfolded, so this glitch is out of solution. Honestly, in my opinion, this is the only guaranteed death sentence type of boss there, so I'm giving him unbeatable rank. Also, it's a plain level, so what did you expect that? Number 10! King dies! Hell yeah, dude! What did you expect that? After hitting Finn on board, he will instantly attack you. He has only one attack, card spam, which you need to jump on by pairing pink cards. But hey, blindfolded person might have a bit of trouble with recognizing cards, you know? At least thanks to weapon swap, you can tank his first set of cards and kill him before he's gonna do second attack. He's average and honestly, possible to beat Hideous if done correctly. Man, that was a lot of explaining, but with that said, how am I gonna manage to beat this random hell? Well, first of all, it's not that random. What you need to understand is that you can control the ice in some way. If you're gonna parry dice while you're just pounding in his hands, you have guaranteed number one and we always move on board by one. Not so useful. If you're gonna parry a bit later, you're gonna get two or three. And this is consistent. Dice will always move from one to three repeat or one three two repeat. What that means is getting two or three is basically a coin flip. And we can use it to our advantage and create our path we will try to follow. The bosses I choose is Cigarette, Rabbit and Ballerina. Because I can restart as much as I want on Cigarette, I can wait for one fireball attack only. One, two, three, four, five, six. Which with prepared counted movement I can easily dodge, wait for him to appear close to me, take hit and hide behind him and burst him out. You might ask though, why won't you just go here and hide behind him before he will appear? Well, let's just say developers prepared for that. Know about Rabbit. As I said, his attack is unpredictable, but who said I need to dodge them? By charging my cards in time, I can use Super 2 in close to perfect movement to dodge two attacks in one and defeat him as scratched. For Ballerina, all I can do is tank damage. I can honestly take one damage from Bullet Swarm and get charged twice. Which will hit me three times, but wait a second. It's already four damage taken, which would mean I will get killed, right? Well, that's true, but I'm also hoping to get bonus heart in one of those bosses, which I have 33% chance to, on each one to get, so I usually should get one. And for the King Dice, I will have Super 2 again, and easily use it to survive first set of cards and kill him before he attacks me second time. Sounds like a dream scenario, right? So how will we make it happen? So, first dice throw, I have 50% chance to hit free and go to the cigarette boss. Then no matter if I'm gonna go for number 1 dice, I always will need to have another 50% chance for 2 or 3 depending where I will be. I have guaranteed Barina fight, and that's the reason why I picked her. If I'm gonna get random 2, I will hit safe spot and can get to her by getting a guaranteed number 1, and if I will get random 3, well I will fight her. After her, we have another conflict and we need to get number 3 to hit the safe spot, and then I have another guaranteed king dice fight, no matter if I will hit 2 or 3. Let's count the numbers, shall we? 3 coin flips means I have 12 and half percent chance for this scenario to happen. Remember I also need at least one heart, which is not guaranteed, but to make it simpler, we are gonna ignore that. We also should mention first coin flip doesn't matter, as this is the first dice throw, we can restart at will. It gives us 25% chance for scenario we are looking for. And it's much more durable, you know? So after some grind, I managed to get the run one heart on the way. So how does the fight go? Red cigarette goes according to the plan, got one hit and burst him down. But for rabbit I screwed up badly. I screwed up super 2 timing, I got hit once. And I didn't get second heart on Barina. What does that mean? I need to get a miracle to get hit only twice. To do that, I will need to dodge bullet swarm somehow. Oh my god! I did it. And run was alive again. But what is even more surprising, she didn't got enough time to charge me second time. And I didn't get second hit! Okay, coin flip, let's go, I need to win the coin flip. Which means instead of 3 hit, I got hit only once, leaving me at 2 HP. I got another coin flip, used super 2 on King Dice and killed him in dramatic fashion. Yes! <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> oh 
What am I doing today? So, that was a long fight and explanation. And I hope you understand how hard this was and how technically impossible it will be with only 3 HP and without Super 2. But maybe Red Sonia will prove us wrong, eh? Attempt 1. She quickly got wrecked by poker chips. Well, as I said, he's unpredictable, so it's kind of understandable, right? Attempt 2. She actually managed to beat poker chips without getting hit with perfect dodges. Well, nice. Then she got dominoes with hearts. She got hit twice by bullet, but she perfectly dodged spikes. Whereas as I say, they are scripted and always the same. Maybe she just practiced movement and patterns. Then she got rabbit and holy fuck man! She perfectly predicted first set of skills and dropped out of them and then this. Just to explain, it's not Red Sonia cheating. It is actually no glitch. By moving just an inch, sometimes they won't hit you. We don't know what causes it exactly, but hey, it can happen. Then this. It's usually in the middle, please, dear god. Well, yes, but actually no. It can be everywhere, so good job predicting unpredictable once again. Then she finally got hit right at the end. She didn't even try to dodge it. I even wouldn't be surprised if she would take that hit on purpose to show us that she got hit. So she doesn't cheat. I mean, that's one of her main arguments. Run wasn't deathless, so she didn't fake it, right? Then she got plane level. Oh god, plane levels. But we already know she mastered them, so it shouldn't be impossible. Fuck the horse! You're starting to act again. Listen, you managed to beat multiple things by hearing the stuff. You might think you reacted right, as you say that instantly after Skeleton created his first sound clue by throwing present. Congratulations to you. But there were other sound clues you should recognize first thanks to your speedrunning experience. First sound clue is board game. You heard it moved only once. And second, you started to shoot instantly. Natural reaction, right? But you like no other should be able to recognize a difference between lobber roundabout sound and plain machine gun. You're up. But you didn't. Why? From our potential king dice throw and end results, that was the only plane lever possible. So by hearing bullets, you should already know it was skeleton hose. Jeez, you really shouldn't say anything as you're just giving me more evidences against you. And yes, she perfectly survived random present movement and random ghost races from the bottom to charge you as soon as he sees you. Also, I would like to mention post productions that, sh that she actually managed to counter the dice roll right before. Sounded like two. It sounded like a two again, goddammit. Sounded like a three. Was that a one? Seemed like a two. Then she got wrecked by Ballerina. Quite expectable, she did get way too many bosses on her way. And it's amazing how she managed to survive that long. Fuck! No! No! Attempt three. She got wrecked by Cigarette. What I can say, no strategy, no survivability. Attempt four. She started with alcohol glasses and bonus heart. She beat them with ease. As I said, there's enough sound clues to make it possible. Then she got skeleton horse. Again. Shit, that's a horse. And she again didn't recognize how far she did get on board game. Come on. She did got hit once, which is already impressive in such a random bullet hell. And then she got monkey with heart. Oh god. Remember when I said monkey is unbeatable? Where Red Sonia recognized that as well. That's usually the eight ball, right? <gasps> no! Does that mean she got killed after a long attempt to survive? Well, of course she didn't die, you dum dums. Remember what I said about Glitch? Yeah, she tried to make it blindfolded. After some time and perfect dodging from the monkey and getting hit only once, she did it. She managed to perfectly position monkey and scrub him out. But what's that? Monkey came back! Congratulations, Red Sonia, you just managed to get one of the rarest things in Cuphead. Monkey glitch glitch! You see, sometimes after making Monkey goes away, he can actually come back in rare occasions. We don't know what causes it, but what is important is Red Sonia's reaction. Did you see her face impression? She is surprised, shocked I would say, about what she just witnessed. Because she saw how she scrolled Monkey out of the screen and got surprised he got back, 
She even reacts to that with words. God, he's making so much noise, it's hard to tell. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the biggest bullshit explanation I've ever heard. She know what she did. She knows she react and she knows how much she just exposed herself with that situation. And her world evidence is bullshit. If Monkey would be activated by matching the cards, she keeps making the same sound over and over, even if he would get scrolled off the screen. The moment he would change the sound he creates is by pairing perfect cards, which you didn't, or by getting knockout, but that will only show you beating him already, which takes down this scenario. God, he's making so much noise, it's hard to tell. That's it. You just assumed he changed his sound clue while he didn't as a desperate way to hit you faking the run. And then you scrolled him out second time in a row. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I wasn't gonna get a match, so I was just gonna keep trying <laughs> the cards for the glitch. Yeah, you keep trying to hide your fakeness, and it doesn't work out. Then she just perfectly parried King Dice twice in a row and killed him hitless. Congratulations, Sonia. You just overdid yourself on that one. Oh god. <laughs> that was the worst. That was the worst thing. <laughs> I got the monkey glitch blindfolded. Do you have the right time, old man? No. Man, from what I can see we already reached first hour mark, so we should speed it up. When it comes to Devil, it's quite difficult first, but with my HP, I can survive first phase with ease. After it, instead of jumping to Pit, I stayed close to Pit and shoot roundabouts upwards. Because there's hidden hitbox, we can keep shooting and claim the lamest victory ever. It's been so cheap, but it's a strategy. Retina didn't realize that and she goes for full fight, but we gonna skip it. As I didn't beat the whole fight myself, it would be unfair to compare it. Although I'm gonna question this. How did she perfectly parry pink ball after it spawned right into her? I leave it up to you, judge. Hmm. Kate. Just beat Cuphead and blindfold. So we did it, right? We managed to beat whole game blindfolded. Well, sorry to say, but not really. I remember dear with Twitch chat. Yeah, somehow I managed to beat the rest of the game, so I need to keep my promise and at least try to beat the last boss, Wally Wobbles. First of all, how does the fight look like? It's separated into four phases. On first one, he shoots eggs which spreads upon contact with edge of the screen and occasionally shoots us with three spreaded bullets. After dealing some damage, he also starts to summon a set of four birds on lower or higher part of screen, on which last one is always pink. Next phase is Bullet Hell, where he starts to shoot multiple feathers. Head first is Baby Genius Bird, which creates spiked egg shield, flies around and shoots us with powerful bullets from time to time. On last phase, Oli is getting carried by doctors, which shoots aimed pills at us, while Wally attacks us with junk or speeds his head, which shoots at us. On paper, this fight doesn't look that hard, and I was thinking the same, but it caught me off guard first time and I didn't manage to come up with any kind of strategy. The biggest problem was second phase, even though feather pattern is kind of repetitive, you really cannot take advantage of that, as your position and boss position cannot be recognized in time to react for it. I even asked community if anyone could have an idea what I could try out, but no one could have helped me. I see something long absent in the sunken faces of passers-by. A glimmer of hope. The god himself decided to show up and sent me one of the pretty average speedrunners, Grandius, which come up with interesting strategy. By staying in the corner of screen, I can wait kind of safely for birds and throw bombs. After hitting two bombs in a row and killing a couple of birds, parry two times in place and then doing third one, move forward to parry pink bird. Although Grondus intended it for card grind first, we both realized we can use this method for something else. Consistently dealing small amount of damage, 
healing first phase on top of screen, getting close to him as soon as possible and use Nuke with 2 HP to keep damaging him a bit unbeatable phase. Nuke and 2 HP is a big price but honestly that's the price I can take. Later on I realize I don't need to go for parry buffer but just listen to the birds. As they die by going out of screen, after King Herpes died, I just parry while going down. So you can technically beat first and second phase with 2 HP left. Finally something you can work with. Maybe Bert's movement is hard to predict, but because we killed him on top, he can do two things. Move to left then down, or move down then left. Later on he keeps doing the same movement. As this is another coin flip, I decided to learn hard time movement combined with muscle memory. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. He goes up but I don't get hit. This is extremely hard and probably the hardest things I come up in this run, but this is the hardest boss after all, I'll need to go all in. After doing some amount of damage and surviving, I will try to hug the wall and shoot him. I can dodge his bullets the same way I was dodging Hilda Minion's bullets or I can try to parry it, which is much more risky. Also in headphones I can hear where he is, if he's close to me, I will move to this corner and pray he will miss me and his egg shield. Last phase is the easiest one. I need to keep damaging him while dodging upcoming bullets. I will get second nuke in time which can come up handy. After insanely long grind and practice, we finally got the run. I survived perfectly first phase, I burst and second phase with only 1 HP lost, which is really rare but it happened a couple of times on practice so I know it was possible, but I didn't realize that during the run. Third phase was the most intense one. I missed the coin flip and did movement for wrong RNG. I didn't do damage, but somehow I didn't get hit. So long random fight has begun. I managed to survive it, get to the last phase, and I got my knockout. Yes! <laughs> and with that, I did it. I managed to beat Cuphead blindfolded from beginning to the end myself. Which is my biggest Cuphead accomplishment which I'm proud up to this day. It was an intense emotional journey and I will never forget it. But if you watched this video up to this moment, you know this is not the end yet. As we need to ask ourselves this question for the last time. How did Red Sonia manage to beat this boss anyways? Man, as for the hardest boss, you really did go all in, huh? Like you always follow boss movement to connect most of the bullets, react to perfect thrown eggs, feathers, pew pew guns and thrust right at you. You shoot the egg special to hear how it connects with boss to know where he is. Found you. But you started to dodge perfectly before you even started to connecting bullets. You saw the birds with your own eyes. So to not run into them, you followed much harder, not straightforward path of feathers to dodge them with ease. I hope he's not super close to me because I'm probably gonna die if he is. Great! For the person which follows so many sound clues, you should recognize that he is close to you thanks to mini bombs explosions. Also if you wouldn't know, you probably would at least try to move an inch to dodge upcoming bullets, but you didn't because you lying and acting again. And as I said, you perfectly follow boss as much as you can. <laughs> Yay! Man, that was a long journey. But this is not over yet. I would like to share one more thing with you. The story of Red Sonia. One of the respectable Cuphead runners. She started slowly running this game, getting better and better, and got 29-29 PB at the end, which is a good time. Shit! Oh my god, by like what, eight seconds? Oh fuck! Yes! Yes! Oh my god! <laughs> we asked community supported her in her journey of speedrunning this game. She even took a part in one of the tournaments, and we showed her nothing else than support. But one day she broke her trust sharing with her newest accomplishment, blindfolded run. Firstly we were excited, for the first time Cuphead was beaten blindfolded so we rushed with excitement to check it. Experienced players quickly realized something is fishy. 
with movement, reactions, but hey, we just spent an hour analyzing it, so let's just get to the point. They tried to speak with her on private, explaining the situation. Yeah, it wasn't technically a speedrun she faked, but claiming a big challenge like this in your favorite game is an issue as well. We didn't get along, as she didn't want to admit to what she did. Throwing terrible arguments like that she used her speedrunning experience, she's the only one female in your community, she wouldn't have a reason to fake it and she's not doing it for fame or money. She's being attacked by us and others. We decided to give up on this, as it wasn't leaderboard issue. We stopped to trust her and she stopped talking with our community. Expectable reaction. But what happened is she actually take this problem to public. Eight months after releasing her blindfold attempt and month after mine attempt, she took a part at 8-Bit Steve show podcast, where she said the same story. Showing our community in bad light, this is where she broke the line. We found this podcast on the beginning of this year, so I tried to reach her out and check if her statement changed. Not only nothing changed, as she keeps claiming it was legit run, and she's the victim. She also needed to post this on her Twitter the same day I messaged her. Hello speedrunners! Which game has the best community? I'm looking to run Shovel Knight, but I had a terrible experience with the Cuphead community and I want to know how everyone treats each other. Like, it only shows how big pain in the ass you still have about this whole mess. I should need to share with you community again how bad Cuphead community treated you. God save your soul after you're gonna watch this video. But let's hear what she actually said about the situation on the podcast. I was like, well, it's just, this is gonna happen pretty soon, so I should probably start practicing. <laughs> Um, so I practiced on stream, live, hours and hours of practicing, and then finally did the, the run. Apparently she did some practice for it. Funny she didn't mention it to us as an argument, as this would make it at least a bit more believable. As I wasn't able to find any stream archives of it or any videos, so that's a bummer. However, uh, some notable people in the Cuphead Discord have uh, been DMing me since March. Basically saying I cheated because they weren't able to do it. And there she is. She tried to fake us out with fake run, share it with us and she make herself a victim. All we did is try to reason with her and make sure this run is faked. But she created this story how she got harassed by us, showing our whole community from worst perspective, which is really unfair. As we grow over years, spending time with each other, sharing with our thoughts and just being normal people enjoying their free time. And you show us like we are the terrible people in terrible place. You started this whole mess and you cannot escape it as you go too deeply into it. So last thing you have left is lies. Public lies. As you mentioned how we didn't believe this was legit run just because you weren't top runner. It doesn't change much. You were a good player and anyone from community could have done it. But no one did. This argument was so stupid that it actually pushed me to prove you wrong. Yes. One of the biggest reasons I did this challenge as well was you, as I wanted to prove you wrong. And guess what? I did it, which I cannot believe up to this day. And uh, as the only female member in the Cuphead community that is ranked, it, uh, it hurts, you know, a little. You weren't the only female. I'm just gonna casually bring Dasha Q. As she was in the community and ran the game at that point, she retired for now, but she's still an active member of community. So you're trying to make yourself a female victim of this story. Oh my god. When it comes to attracting men, name a part of your body, that's your secret weapon. Her vagina. So you just walking down the street talking about no hey. Wow. Yo, JJ. It is even mentioned in the description of the podcast, which is funny. Yeah. Right, and, and they're saying that, that I, I didn't do it legit, so I was like, well, I did it live, firstly. Yeah, you did it on the stream. Yes, notification pop out on our stream bot. You even got raided during the stream by one of our fellow members of community and a moderator, the potato123. And it was like a five or six hour stream, like it, it wasn't a record or anything. Your stream took five or six hours, but completed run on YouTube takes two and a half hour and stream vault is a bit less than 3 hours. YouTube is shorter as you cut off toilet breaks, but you just lied on podcast. Or maybe you didn't prepare for interview as all you wanted to show is the fake story from your fake perspective. That's... I have, I have like 700 hours of playtime in Cuphead, so it's... It helps. <laughs> well, if you have 700 hours, that means you aren't experienced as others, right? Not really. You see, Wolf, for example, has 2,600 hours. 
Makes sense, right? As he's one of the top runners. But guess how much hours I have on Steam? 650. Does that mean I'm worse than you due to 50 hour gap? Well, Readerbot shows the difference as well. So what's the point of the hour argument? Well, the thing with Cuphead, uh, since it's such uh, like a, a musical game, you know, there's there's all kinds of sound cues and, and music points where, where you know something is going to happen. Um, like the root pack, that first boss. If you, you know when the potato is going to be shooting at you, because you know it from playing so many times. Like you know the, the count that he does, and then he's like shooting another thing at you. Ah yes, here we go. He explaining how you listen to sound clues, use them as much as possible, and combine it with speedrunning experience. By taking example from fucking Root Pack, the easiest boss of the game. There were much harder bosses, sound clues and speedrunning experience works perfectly, as I showed in this video. And I also proven how many times you did incredible feats, even though speedrunning experience or sound clues were impossible to use. You cheated this run, and you will say everything you need to keep this lie alive, even if it means taking it to public and make a victim out of yourself. For me, this blindfolded challenge was an amazing experience. Sharing strategies with community, slowly doing progress, and just having fun overall. And that was an emotional journey I will never forget. I don't know why. But this song made me cry. <laughs> Oh my god, guys, what a journey that was. You claiming that you didn't make it for money, fame or views, then you did it for what? You claim that you are afraid to try out speedrunning again due to bad experience with our community, and you saying other communities like Messenger One treats you with respect. We did as well, up to the moment you tried to cheat on us. And hey, maybe, just maybe, other communities treat you better, as you didn't cheat on them yet?